Hey, so today we have the long-awaited build and gear review for Genetic. Uh, this is going to be two parts. It's The first one's going to be for a basic Genetic, uh, low level, you're just getting into the class, you don't have a lot of money, kind of new to maybe the game, and kind of what to shoot for in that regard. And then the other part of the video is going to be looking at a high level Genetic, what you could shoot for at the end game. Um, that's way more gear than you really even need, but we'll look at that as well. Um, in the description of the video, I'm going to have a gear tier list that I made uh, to kind of show you the priority of, you know, what's good and what's the best and uh, just kind of situationally what I feel is the uh, top tier items that you could get. And I'm also going to link to a Warp Portal forum thread where I will be posting the guide as well in case you have any questions you want to uh, put there. If you have other questions, you can reply to the video as well. Um, if you're looking for like broad feedback from other players, the forums are a good place. If you're just looking for specific feedback from me, um, you could go either way. Um, but without further ado, we'll take a look at the low level genetic. The first thing that we're going to look at is the upper headgear. This is the Harvester hat. It's a community headgear. Basically, it reduces the variable cast time of cart cannon by 100%. At plus 9, it increases the damage by 15%. But plus 9 is kind of a waste of upgrade. 15% is very insignificant. And plus 4 would do just fine. Um, or plus 0. Uh, for mid gear, I have Dark Blinder. The only reason I have this is it's a middle headgear that does something. Um, otherwise, you could go sunglasses or something like that. Uh, I didn't choose sunglasses because they cost a lot, and I didn't want to make the build seem out of reach. So I went with this. If you don't want that, you can just leave it blank. Uh, I had a lot of extra space in the budget, so I decided to pick up a toy syringe. This is a pay-to-win item. It increases the recovery rate of condensed potions by 150%. Um, I, you don't have to use that, um, but I had budgeted about 500 mil for this build and um, I was well below budget so I figured if I was to get one quality of life item it would be the toy syringe um, but again it just helps you reduce the number of potions that you use if you don't have it you can just pot faster um, for the armor I decided to go with a Valkmant uh, this one has an evil druid I like uh, the Valk armor because it gives all stats plus one and it's indestructible also, it reduces your chance of getting stunned by 50%. So ultimately, I think it's a very well-rounded armor. The alternative would be a Geffen Magic Robe, which makes it so that you can't have interrupted cast time. But considering you have uninterrupted cast time from the Harvester Hat already, I don't feel that that is a good thing to get unless you're acid bombing. Um, for the weapon, I would recommend, if you're 120 or higher, to get a Thanatos Hammer. It's a 5% chance of leeching 5% of your HP or SP from a physical uh, damage, or from inflicting physical damage. Um, this one has a Caramel card for uh, Base Worm, but you could also use a Hunterfly card. If you used a Hunterfly, it would be an 8% chance of leeching, I think, uh, 20... So I want to say 23%, um, it's actually it's 16, so it would be 21% um, of your damage as HP. And if you wanted more HP leech, you could go with a triple Hunterfly Twin Edge of Not Seeger. Um, you can use the Twin Edge before level 120, it's only a level 75 requirement. It's also a level 4 weapon, it has a little bit lower attack, it has more card slots. So if you had three hunter flies, it would be a six percent or a nine percent chance of leeching, um, I think like forty something percent HP. So or, so it's or yeah, so it would be better than this in terms of the amount of HP that you leech. So if you're struggling to survive, that would be a good opportunity to to do that instead. But Hunterfly is a little bit more expensive, and overall, I think one Hunterfly and a Thanos Hammer is a lot more cheaper and obtainable and useful than three Hunterflies in a Twin Edge, but that's just my opinion. Uh, for the shield, I think that Valk Shield is a very well-rounded shield. It reduces the damage that you take from fire, water, shadow, and undead property attacks by 20%, um, which makes up a bulk of the monster's elements 
elemental attacks in RO, except for like wind. Um, but this will cover your bases for most purposes. Also, for the sake of being a general piece of equipment, Ogre Tooth card reduces damage received from medium sized monsters by 25%. Most monsters that you might level on are going to be medium sized, so that's perfect for that. Um, since Valk Shield is so cheap, you could easily get a set of racial Valk Shields uh, for different situations. Now, for the garment, um, I would recommend a giant face worm skin because it's cheaper than a heroic backpack and it's just as effective. It also gives 15% HP and 5% SP. You're going to want to look to buy one that has int on all of the special enchantments and a slot for a Raedric card or some other reduction card or possibly Menblat. I would not recommend Menblat because you're not doing enough damage to really justify uh, sacrificing survivability. Since you're going to take damage because you're not dealing as much, um, you're going to want to go for survivability over damage or DPS until you can reach a point where your DPS is so high that you can start sacrificing survivability for more DPS. Um, but yeah, base worm skins are very common. People run it all the time. So there's really no uh, need to really like, it's really not very expensive. They're very common. Just try and make sure that if you get a special int enchant that it's plus eight so that you get four int for that. Uh, it combos with the temporal dex boots, which as I said, give 15% HP and 5% SP. Uh, it also will increase your damage on long range targets by 5% if you have 120 dex. Uh, the enchant that I have on here is Lucky Day because the status uh, attack that you get from 200 luck will increase your damage uh, by a good amount. And I think it's better than Bear's Power because Bear's Power will actually reduce your HP by a quite significant amount. And it only activates when you're receiving damage. And you really don't want to be receiving damage on a genetic that's squishy like this one. So you really like Lucky Day because you get more perfect dodge, which actually means if you're over mobbed, you'll dodge a lot of the attacks, which means that you can actually handle a larger mob because of it. And it activates when you deal damage rather than when you take damage. Um, so that's mostly everything about Temporal Dex Boots. Um, alternatively, now going on to the accessories, um, the cheapest thing that you could get is a Physical Enhancer Ring. It increases your attack by 5%, um, which isn't very big, but it also does combo with Geffen Magic Robe. If you go that route, there's a small little synergy there that's not very important. But 5% attack will affect your damage in a meaningful way, considering... The next best accessory that you could use is going to be super expensive comparatively. It's going to be like a thousand times more expensive than that. Um, so this is a really cost effective option. If you happen to have, like if you're coming back from the old days, if you happen to have a Medal of Honor, it does 5% attack as well, but it also has some of these other perks. So 10% attack speed and 5% uh, magic attack could be beneficial for Acid Bomb or Cart Cannoning faster. Um, or just generally attacking things quicker. So yeah, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't recommend buying one of these because the amount of badges that it would require makes it prohibitively expensive. It's actually more expensive than like any other thing you could have gotten in the accessory slot. Well, not any other thing, but needlessly expensive. You could get much better for what you pay. Uh, for MVPs, you can use the Silversmith Bracelet because it gives you level 5 Spellbreaker. And level 5 Spellbreaker deals a percentage of your enemy's max HP when you break a spell successfully. So for something like Face Worm that has 20 plus million HP, if you Spellbreak it, uh, it actually will deal a percentage of 20 million health. So it can actually help you kill it a lot quicker considering your damage is going to be low on this kind of character. Um, generally speaking, if you're doing Face Worm on a weak genetic like this, I would only recommend killing the first four mini bosses and then just leaving the instance because the amount of supplies and like frustration and time you're going to sink into killing the queen is just going to lose you money when you could do something else. Um, so with the cylinder headband, um, this would be the biggest upgrade you could get individually for a genetic like if you're if you're going to invest in one piece of gear that's going to overall increase your damage by a, by a drastic amount, the cylinder headband is going to be that piece of gear all the way up until level 170. Um, basically, this will 
give you instant cast cart cannon just like harvester hat it will reduce the cost sp cost of cart cannon to be almost nothing and it will give you 60 percent more damage so it's way more than the 15 percent that you get from this and it only requires plus eight um, it's going to be pretty expensive, but the impact that it has on your damage is the single biggest upgrade out of any piece of gear you could get. Um, another piece of gear you could pick up is the Sapphire Wrist. Um, the, it gives 10 int, 10 dex, 10 luck, and 100 magic attack if you have Aid Condensed Potion level 10. Um, so that's a good alternative. Uh, it's fallen a lot in price because there's other alternatives out there, but I would recommend going for this one if you're going for a budget build. Um, there's the chemical glove, but the chemical glove is in this weird place where it's not the worst and it's not the best, or it's not cost effective, but it's not best in slot. So I definitely wouldn't recommend going for chemical glove if you're just starting to build a bear, like a budget genetic. I would go straight for cylinder, and then I would worry about some of the other upgrades. Um, but I would probably bypass chemical glove entirely unless you really want to use it for some reason, like you really want to have more potting efficiency. Um, but ultimately, I think you should be surviving just fine with the, the HP and SP leech that you get, that you won't need the potting efficiency from it. So as far as the stats go, uh, I think the dex is a little bit too high for this level. I think 120 int would be much more beneficial and a higher strength pool. You only need 120 dex when you reach um, level 170 because that's when you're going to use the old Midas Whisper. But other than that, like you really don't need um, any dex for any reason. So um, you can prioritize dex last. But that said, uh, that covers the basic genetic. Um, we're going to move on to the high tier genetic now. All right, so now let's take a look at the top tier genetic. This is um, pretty much what I think is the optimal build. Um, you might see some variants. I'm not saying it's the only build, but this is the one I've had the most success with. I have soloed every MVP in the game, except for the Bio 5 ones, because I really don't think that... Uh, I don't like Bio 5 that much, and I mean, I think I could do it if I just spammed res tokens and acid bomb, but I don't really think that that is successfully soloing a boss. I think, like, Deathless is really the uh, what you're looking for if you're going to say you can solo a boss. If you can do it without dying, then I give you credit for that, but I really just don't feel like doing that, uh, and I don't think I could do it with Bio 5, so... I just won't count that, but everything else, I don't think that there's a single thing I couldn't do with this build. So, I mean, you might have better results with something else, but I would be interested to see what makes it better or what how it works out, like what the DPS is. But uh, to go top to bottom, we're using the plus 12 old Midas Whisperer, and this is going to give us uh, cart cannon damage of 90% increase, uh, as well as some other benefits like 48 attack. But uh, I have tried many times to get this plus 14. It just won't go. So no plus 14 for me. Uh, and honestly, it's not that big of a deal. It's more of a prestige thing. Like I said, I can do everything without it. I mean, it would probably make a pretty good difference in damage. 15% is like no joke because it's a skill percent. But I don't have it. Uh, for the enchant, I have metal, but I don't have metal 5, which is ideally what I would be going for. I think it's realistic to get that, but I just haven't put the time or money into it because I feel like it's low priority. And then the enchantments don't really matter. It's more about getting the enchant here. Obviously, I would have loved to get like int 5, int 5 on there, but the odds of successfully enchanting a Midas and getting the enchant you're looking for on this slot is very low. You could also get Magic Essence if you like to Acid Bomb. I just think Acid Bomb is too expensive a skill to use, and you very rarely ever need to use it to kill most MVPs. I barely ever use it. The only thing I use it on is like Ifrit. That's pretty much it. So, uh... For your mid gear, we're using Seraphim Coronet. You need 120 int to get 250 attack from this thing. It's a middle slot only, and I don't think that there's anything that even comes close to it. Um, you could use a mob scarf and sunglasses, but the damage is just way better for here. Plus, you don't get the um, cast immunity from Love Piece, and so that's why I use this, is to get uninterrupted cast time at a small cost of increased SP, which I don't really care about. Um, 
and I could use like an attack item here or something like that, but I don't run instant cast standard as a standard on my build. Um, I have to use stat food to get it, and the reason for that is I don't like to remove gear when I shield spell, um, because it's just a lot more tedious and it takes longer. It takes time out of my run to manually remove gear or swap gear when I'm just trying to get shield spell up. So I would like to have a little bit of cast time without stat foods. Then I get shield spell and then I use the stat food because shield spell has a seven minute duration and the stat food is only five minutes. Um, and then for the armor, we're looking at the abyss dress, the icefall dress and the nature dress as your primary uh, gears that you use. Uh, this is a, for a lot of instances. Most instances in endgame content, you're fighting a demon monster. So Abyss Dress works well for that. And most demons are also shadow property. And what's not a demon is probably undead or some mix of the two. So Abyss Dress really works on a large amount of bosses. Um, the next most important for bossing would be the Icefall Dress, because it gives you 20% or 40% damage to fire and water, and 40% to formless and demi-human. So this is really good for uh, things like Catalanux or Ifrit. Uh, it's also very good for anything in Bio 5 that is fire or water. Um, so you would swap this on for those monsters, you'd, and then... For like archers or something, you would swap on the nature dress because it gives you more damage to uh, demi-human and brute and wind and earth. So anything that's wind, you would deal extra damage on in bio 5 or, you know, anywhere. But that's just one example. Um, I would say that abyss dress is higher priority than icefall. But again, you can kind of see my priorities in the tier list in the description and in the forums that I've linked. Um, but yeah, Abyss Dress is very good there. Other armors that you could use are Evil Dragon Armor, and this is mostly for clearing mobs while you're leveling. Um, if you can one-shot something, it's better. If you can one-shot something without using an Abyss, an Icefall, or a Nature, and you can one-shot it with EDA, I would always use an EDA because it makes it so that you have um, better sustain. You can always keep your HP and SP full. Um, I like to have Evil Druid in here, but if, you know, that's my personal preference. I think Undead has a large variety of uses um, compared to other alternatives. Now, you could also use a Holy Fire Dragon Armor, it's an Angel Link card, for 20% more damage to um, boss monsters. So this is really good for Valkyrangris, especially if you do not have a Hero Trade Mail. Uh, my hero trade mail is only plus seven right now because I just found it and I only got it to plus seven with safe certs and I'm waiting for a refine event to get it to plus nine and plus 10 uh, and then get it to plus 12. At plus 12, it will give me plus 30 to all stats when I combine it with the hero, uh, breach of hero. And um, that is better than basically a flattery robe with most enchantment combinations on it it loses in damage to a flattery robe with strength enchants but like strength three strength three but it also gives you 30 vit and like 30 agi and that quality of life is actually really nice on genetic um, so i value that higher than any small increase in damage that a flattery robe would give you um, but flattery robe is still good i'm not saying it's trash and it's good for other things but i just wouldn't use it on genetic over bo uh, brooch of hero and hero trade mail um moving on to the weapon i prefer to use a plus 15 double liberation crimson mace with the neutral element on there uh, other people might like to use a triple liberation twin edge of not seeger with an expert archer enchant on there prior to twin edge being enchantable uh crimson mace was by far the best and this small 10% difference in damage seemed to have pushed Twin Edge into the mainstream. Uh, I don't think that there's that big of a difference between the two. I think that, um, generally speaking, the difference isn't that big. But if you already have a Twin Edge, by all means, continue using the Twin Edge. If you already have a Crimson, by all means, keep using the Crimson. If you have to pick one right now, having neither of them, technically, I think... Uh, triple Liberation Twin Edge with an EA enchant uh, beats Crimson Mace um, in damage by a bit. 
but the reason I like this is because you can pyroclastic and it won't break. Um, you don't have to change your cannonballs because it's neutral. Um, if you do pyroclastic and you want to use a converter, uh, I think you can do that. I honestly don't do it that much because anything that I pyro for would be taking damage. I would just use a cannonball for my element. Um, but ultimately, um, I don't have to worry about FCPing in order for this not to break. And I also don't have to worry about accidentally cart cannoning a fire type monster with a cannon with an iron cannonball and dealing fire element damage on accident, reducing the overall DPS. So there's a, there's some trade-offs, but ultimately I think Twin Edge does more damage in the end, but not by an overwhelming amount. Now, uh, for the shield, I am running with a plus 9 Excellion shield of Royal Guard, so Alice card here. It gives 10% HP and SP, which was unheard of in a shield until recently, and it also gives 30 attack every 3 upgrades, so I'm getting 90 attack right now, and I'll get 120 attack when this is plus 12, and I do plan on plus 12-ing this soon. Um, for the garment, we're using Fallen Angel Wing. This is still best in slot for genetic, although it's rapidly losing its position as best in slot for every other class. There's other things that I find are either more cost effective, very close, if not better in damage. Um, but I use a Deviant and a Menblat Fallen Angel Wing. Now, you want to have Expert Archer enchants on here, and for Menblat, I would only use this in situations where I would actively take more damage by wearing a Deviant um, because you take 50% more elemental damage. So anything that has an elemental bash or spams magic on you, I would immediately default the uh, Menblat. Otherwise, um, generally speaking, it's better to take less damage and use less supplies than to do a little bit extra DPS. But if the thing that you're fighting is pretty weak, you can go ahead and use the Fallen Angel Wing of Shooter because it'll just help you kill it that much faster. Uh, for the boots, we're still using Temporal Dex boots, but these are plus nine to help us get a little closer to instant cast since we're using Old Midas Whisper. And uh, the difference is we're also using Runaway Magic. In order to proc Runaway Magic, you need to have a Bottle Grenade and you cast Demonic Fire. Uh, and that is a magic attack that um, Oh, I totally can't get rid of that. Okay, yeah, so Demonic Fire um, is a magical attack. It will activate Runaway Magic by a low... It's a pretty low chance, so the more monsters you can hit with Demonic Fire, the better. But that will activate 200 int, um, and it reduces SP by 200 every second for 10 seconds? Yeah. So, I mean, you lose a lot of SP when this goes off. So be wary of that, but it's it's so worth it because it doubles your DPS. Um, yeah, that's a big SP drain. And it also combos, it won't go off unless you use Demonic Fire, and it combos nicely with the Temporal Ring, which gives 10% HP SP, 50 attack, 50 magic attack. People will seem to forget about this part of it. Uh, that's actually very significant and it gives 40 int. So the 40 int is important because the cart cannon formula is the base damage of cart cannon times your int divided by 40. So I run anywhere between 200 and 240 int with buffs and that would um pretty much that this is an entire multiplier on that damage. So instead of having a five times multiplier, I would have a six times multiplier, which basically trumps any other accessory that you could ever consider using. Um, it just does so much in terms of the base damage increase of cart cannon, and then it gets multiplied by all of your other percents uh, after that. So just the base stats that you get from this are very useful. And the next accessory is PDM. Now we have 108 strength, 36 uh, agi, 62 vit, 120 int, and 120 dex. Uh, the dex is for the temp boots, the int is for the seraphim, uh, and the strength is for PDM because every 18 strength we get 3 int, which means we're getting 18 int because we have 6 of that here. Uh, so that's almost 20 int just from PDM alone, which is half a multiplier. So that is of, of the beast damage of cart cannon. So 
that is very useful. And then the fact that we have 120 int also gives us 18 uh, strength. So the fact that int and strength are critical stats to a genetic and they double dip off of PDM makes this very valuable. Um, there are situations where hero trade mail and brooch of hero are going to exceed this in damage. And that's when whether your abyss dress, nature dress, or ice fall are not going to benefit you in a fight. Um, but yeah, PDM is not really, is probably the next thing to be replaced if there ever is a good accessory that comes out that is somehow better than it for genetic, but right now it is pretty much best in slot. Um, the reason I have Kaffir Blossom cards in there is because I value survivability a lot more than the 1 or 2% increase in damage that Gold Scaraba would give you. Uh, Gold Scaraba, if you use two of them, would give you 40 attack, and it would reduce your HP by 2%, whereas Kaffir Blossom card will increase your or increase your resistance to water, earth, fire, wind, holy, and shadow by 20% for having two of them. Um, and in certain situations, you would actually be able to put on different uh, gear sets and you'd um, be immune to elemental damage. So if you're fighting something that basically you know, has a really strong water ball, for example, or a ice attack or water attack, then you'd be able to completely ignore that damage because you're immune to that element. Um, so that's why being able to be elemental immune with either proof pots and carefree um, it's definitely more valuable than a 1 or 2% increase in your total attack. Because one thing I want to show you is with a Crimson Mace, if I go in Shield Spell, um, I'm looking at 210 plus, um, it was a 902, I think, or something like that. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so... Basically, uh, we're looking at 210 plus 1,000 attack or 1,042 attack. That is basically so much attack that the 40 attack that you get from Gold Scaraba is very negligible compared to the um, quality, like the benefits that you're getting out of Kaffir Blossom. Um, I'm not saying that if, if you're making an alt genetic or something and it's not going to be your primary class, Gold Scaraba is fine. I'm just saying for the very top echelon of them and for the variety of things that you're going to come up against uh, Kaffir Blossom I think is better uh, and we kind of already talked about the value of, of malicious uh, Thanatos Hammer versus Kingbird um, basically if, if Kingbird is going to save you a cart cannon in terms of killing a mob you should do it otherwise malicious is just as good and it gives you more survivability um, for demi humans you would use a glorious morning star uh, an alternative footgear uh, swap would be an enforcer shoe because it gives you power maximize, which would make sure that you don't have big weapon variants in your damage. Like when you get to dealing 400 to 500k cart cannons, the weapon variants that you get from the over upgrade on your weapon actually plays a huge role. Like you might be doing a 70k damage difference between your lowest hit and your highest hit and having enforcer shoes helps mitigate that um, for your shadow gear i use a two int upper headgear to help raise the base damage of cart cannon i prefer to default malicious shadow set and a costume amster bag with hp absorption i never really run out of hp even when i'm tanking uh very strong mvps because the proc chance from these items are enough to keep me full pretty much at all times, despite what the MVP is doing. Um, for the weapon, I still think Kingbird is pretty good. And I like to get the int because this is five int total from the accessories, which again helps the base damage of cart cannon. Um, if you have a physical shadow set, you could use that instead, but I, um, I'm i not sure how big the damage difference is between the two. I'm pretty sure that um, the int is, is more important though. And if you are going, for pure damage, you can go for the Liberation Shadow set with the Safeguard Shield and the Ancient Shadow Armor to get the synergy with the Kingbird weapon. Um, and that's going to be your best bet. And that's another reason why uh, you might not go physical, because the physical weapon won't synergize here. Um, whereas you get two synergies here, you get two synergies here, and you get two synergies there. So. 
that's pretty much it for the shadow gear and the build and the main loadout. Um, hopefully you found some of this information helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you want to ch make sure, um, or if you have any questions on what to prioritize, make sure you check out the tier list that I have referred to already. Um, and again, I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next guide.